To our viewers, you're seeing some of this video right now. These are some of the projectiles, some of them drones. Uh, unclear specifically what we're seeing and, and where this is, but we know that the Iron Dome and the intercepts have been at play, including assets from the United States. They have been responding and intercepting some of those projectiles. Let's bring in ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raditz, who is joining us now on the phone. Martha, uh, you've been sending some, some emails, some reports from your sources. What do we know about these missiles and drones that Iran is sending to Israel now? With the U.S. official I have been speaking to this evening said they expect 400 to 500 drones and missiles to be heading towards Israel. That is clearly happening right now. As you know, many a wave of drones were launched several hours ago. The missiles have been launched more recently, uh, just about 150 missiles so far. But then that swarm of drones and the Iranians have timed this so they all go towards their target at once. They are indeed trying to overwhelm the air defenses. Another really important point here with is that the U.S. is clearly involved in trying to intercept. The U.S. official told me they're trying to intercept everything they can. They're doing that from the Red Sea. They're doing that from the Mediterranean and throughout the Middle East where they do have air defenses. Others are trying to help as well. This comes after the Iranians warned the U.S. not to help, to stay out of it. Basically, according to this U.S. official, Iranians said to the U.S., if you don't involve yourselves in this, we will stay away from you. And yet tonight we are seeing that the U.S. is shooting down missiles, drones, whatever they can do to keep them away from Israel and to try to keep Israelis safe. They've also, according to this U.S. official, these drones and missiles are headed towards three military facilities. Uh, they said they do not think they are purposely uh, aiming at civilian areas, but these are not completely accurate drones or missiles, and there could certainly be, as Brit pointed out some sort of damage from these, not only from the missiles or drones themselves that they may not be able to intercept, uh, but from falling debris as well with. And Martha, we know that Israel has one of the most sophisticated air defense systems in the world. We talk about the Iron Dome and then the support from the U.S. now. Is it your sense in talking to your sources that the magnitude of this attack from Iran is a surprise in any way, or is this consistent with what they were expecting? I, I think it is a surprise. I think it is larger than they expected, much worse than they expected. And they are so focused on trying to get these missiles and drones down. But even if they get 85 percent of them down, it's bound to hit something. They're bound for some of those missiles or drones to get through to their target. Sorry, if sorry, right sorry. now what we're seeing and, and Brit there right in the middle of it, seeing these swarms of drones, these swarms of missiles uh, that really could overwhelm the system. Martha, stand by uh, for us for a moment, if you could. I want to go back to Britt Clement because, Britt, I understand you're hearing sirens right now in Jerusalem. Um, if you're able to hear us, can you tell us what you're seeing, what you're hearing? At the moment, at the moment we're, we're not. It, that doesn't mean that it's not happening in other parts of Jerusalem, but this does seem to be a, a period of eerie quiet, especially after uh, we heard uh, the, that s those several uh, interceptions and, as I say, the wailing of, uh, of the air raid sirens. But as far as I can see, uh, it doesn't seem like there are any interceptions at the moment or any uh, imminent danger. Okay, Britt, thank you. Uh, Martha, I'd like to bring you back in here because you were talking about uh, the calculation calculation from the U.S. And of course, uh, for weeks, the, the, the move has been to try to prevent an escalation across the region. What does this do uh, to our position right now? And how does the U.S. respond militarily? I, I, I think the U.S. will do everything possible not to respond militarily. They want to put themselves in a defensive position to defend Israel, not to go after Iran. But what they are most worried about now is how Israel responds to this, what Israel does. And 
proportional? How do they look at a proportional after what they have just seen? If indeed there is loss of life, I would imagine that Israel's response will be larger than if there is not. And that's one of those things that the president and his national security team are talking about tonight. They have obviously been in touch with Israel all week uh, and, and the Israelis about how they would respond, trying to tamp this down. But with 400, 500 possible drones and missiles expected this evening, it's pretty hard to tell Israel what to do. And Martha, we know that President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu have a frosty relationship. They, they had a conversation recently, but is there any suggestion that, you know, when the U.S. or, or President Biden uh, makes these pleas uh, to Netanyahu and his government, that they would ask, actually listen to them um, or, or continue to go forward with their own plans? Well, you know, over the several months, President Biden, of course, has been talking to Prime Minister Netanyahu, asking them to please let more humanitarian aid into Gaza, to please take more care with civilian casualties. And Prime Minister Netanyahu has basically said, this is our fight. Uh, stay out of it, essentially. Uh, the White House keeps going back to them. They're getting stronger and stronger on that. And yet, it, it, this situation tonight is so unpredictable. We don't know how this will end. We don't know what we'll get through, if anything. We're obviously hoping nothing gets through to Israel uh, and all of these are shot down. But it is, just as you say, Whit, Whit, it's a very fraught relationship and Israel is right in the middle of a huge escalation right now. All right, Martha Raddatz for us, our chief global affairs correspondent. Thank you so much. We truly appreciate it. I want to bring in our uh, senior White House correspondent, Selena Wang, who's been tracking all of this. Selena, we know that President Biden was supposed to be continuing his, his weekend in Delaware, but he went back to the White House early today to meet with his national security team. They were in the Situation Room. What are you hearing from the administration right now? Exactly what he cut his weekend trip short and I'm told by officials that he has been holed up in the situation room for hours and they're just wrapping that meeting up with his top national security advisors. The president though he's making very clear tonight that America's support of Israel's defense is ironclad despite that very frosty relationship between Netanyahu and President Biden as you were just talking about with Martha. He is making that distinction very clear. Now look the White House is on high alert. They've been on high alert for days and officials tell me that anxieties here are running very high because the U.S. is very worried about how Israel could respond to this and how this could widen this war. This is exactly what the president has been avoiding thus far. He's been very careful to calibrate and to message to all of the partners and allies to Israel not to escalate and to contain this. Yeah, president Biden was asked this week, what's your message to Iran if they're considering an attack on Israel? His message was pretty blunt. He said, don't. Um, that said, Selena, the White House has been pressed repeatedly about what the response would be from the U.S. Uh, we heard Martha talking about this, that the, the U.S. for the most part in a supporting role here. But do you have any more information about what our involvement could be? I know that we sent new additional resources to the region. We're talking ships and manpower. What can you tell us about that? Exactly what I mean, the U.S. was trying to prepare for this situation, though they wanted to avoid this. So they were already surging military assets to the region because a big vulnerability here is U.S. forces. So they want to protect those U.S. forces in the region. And for days now, the U.S. has been telegraphing to Iran, as you say, do not do this. Do not target U.S. forces. The U.S. has made clear that they didn't know about this Damascus strike beforehand. They weren't involved in it. Their message to Iran is don't get us pulled into this. Don't get us involved. So that that is very much the message the president has been delivering. It's unclear what this relationship like with Netanyahu is going to be going forward and trying to understand what the Israeli response is going to be. Remember, not too long ago, President Biden issued his strongest criticism of Netanyahu yet and said, if you don't do more, if you don't do enough to protect civilians in Gaza, then we could change our policy towards Israel. That could mean withholding U.S. aid if Israel doesn't do enough. And officials tell me that what the president has laid out in terms of getting more humanity aid in opening those border crossings. Officials tell me that is really the president's baseline. And if even that doesn't get accomplished, well, then we've got a problem here. Selena Wang for us at the White House. Thank you so much. Let's bring in Colonel Steve Ganyard, our ABC News contributor. And Steve, I just want to talk about the unprecedented nature of this attack. Iran going after Israel directly within its borders. Have we ever seen anything like this? 
Well, we've never seen uh, an attack directly by Iran on Israel. That's unprecedented. But the numbers here are what's so amazing, Rit. Four to 500 incoming drones and missiles. That's unprecedented for any air defense system. Now, we know that the Israelis have the most sophisticated and capable uh, integrated air and missile defense capability. But four to 500 means that it probably is almost inevitable that some are going to get through. It's interesting to look at the kinds of videos that uh, that we see Brit bringing from from Jerusalem. Um, we're talking about the Iron Dome, and everybody's f uh, familiar with the Iron Dome and what that does against some of uh, the short-range missiles coming out of Gaza. But the Israelis have a layered defense, so it's Iron Dome at the lower altitudes. Then there's another system called David's Sling, which is the medium altitudes, and then for very high ballistic missile intercepts, there's the Arrow 2 missile. And so a lot of what we seem to be seeing here is not uh, is more the David Sling. It's less Iron Dome. So David Sling, a bit of a newer system, but it does reach up higher and it, it does seem to be intercepting these incoming uh, Iranian attacks at a higher altitude. So, uh, Steve, let me ask you more about that because, you know, beyond the, the drones, and we're talking about potentially hundreds from Iran tonight, uh, we also know that they have an elaborate uh, ballistic missile system. Um, talk to us about the difference and the type of damage that these missiles could do. This is very different than, like, the rockets that we typically, typically see, see being shot from, like, Gaza or from Hezbollah into Israel. Right. There's still conflicting reports, Wit, about whether the Iranians actually have launched ballistic missiles. But that's what that Arrow 2 system is. It's a very high altitude uh, ballistic middle missile interceptor. So it's not easy to intercept ballistic missiles, but the Arrow 2 has proven quite capable. So that's the real concern here, because if Iran starts launching these long range ballistic missiles, that is going to provoke Israel in a way to uh, make sure that its response is going to be overwhelming. So. What we see tonight with four to five hundred missiles and, and uh, drones coming inbound, uh, I think that the, what's, that the Iranians have bought themselves a, a retaliatory strike that will uh, be uh, uh, much more from the, uh, from the Israelis than they provided tonight. And what could an Israeli retaliatory strike look like? Well, Israel has a lot more capability to project power than Iran does. So they have a very capable air force. They have F-35 stealth fighters, uh, very capable F-15s. They have cruise uh, missiles that can be launched from submarines and from ships. Uh, so the air power, the, the capability of the Israeli air force is far beyond anything that the Iranians have. And the, the Israeli air force can own the airspace over Iran. So between that and the ships at sea, uh, the Israelis have a lot of options in how they retaliate. Steve, another thing that has surprised a lot of people in watching this play out tonight, Jerusalem, not typically a place where you would see, you know, rockets or projectiles shot to, uh, obviously a mixed population. You have Jews, you have Muslims and, and these holy sites. Um, and you talked about the potential for something going wrong, even if they weren't targeting a place like Jerusalem. If one of these projectiles or you know, a rocket dropped and, and injured civilians, how significant would something like that be? Yeah, well, apparently the Iranians would claim that they're only going after military sites. There is a significant uh, missile base that is very close to Jerusalem. So that may be what, uh, what Brit is seeing and hearing. If they do go after military bases, then obviously the Israelis have put quite a bit of their air defenses around those military bases. But it's one of these things where the more that comes in, uh, it's more of, of a problem to solve, and it makes it much more difficult for the, uh, the Iron Dome and the David Sling and the Arrow to figure out what's incoming and a danger and what's not with this idea that if you hit them, where, do the, where does the debris go? Does it hurt people on the ground? And Steve, let's talk about the U.S. here. We know that we're shooting down some of these projectiles, but what, what's the likelihood this draws us deeper into a regional conflict now? This is a real concern, Whit, because we know that the Iranians earlier in the week were very clear that if the U.S. helped Israel uh, defend against the attack that Iran was said was coming, that U.S. forces in the region would become fair game. So we now we, we have uh, forces in Iraq, we have forces in Jordan, we have forces uh, in the Red Sea. So all of a sudden, after weeks of the Iranian uh, surrogates not coming after U.S. forces in the region, we now know that uh, these forces are now fair game and open to attack by Iran. So there's a real danger here that if Iran miscalculates and uh, goes after U.S. forces, and it's clear that uh, Iran was the, uh, 
was the instigator, uh, then that could very easily draw the U.S. into a wider Middle East war. Well, that's truly been a major concern for, for months since that October 7th attack. Steve Ganyard for us. Thank you so much. Let's bring in ABC's senior Pentagon reporter, Louis Martinez. Uh, Louis, I know that you've got a lot of sources on this and you've been confirming much of this information throughout the evening. Uh, what more are you learning tonight? And, and have we heard any update on whether any of these projectiles from Iran have actually landed uh, and done any damage in right. Israel? Wait, wait, it's unclear exactly if the from U.S. sources, if officially yet, whether something has actually landed inside Israel. What we are hearing from U.S. officials is that United States forces in the region are shooting down whatever uh, drones or missiles may be headed towards Israel if they're capable. Uh, you spoke earlier about exactly uh, about additional assets being sent into the region. Uh, we are aware that two U.S. Navy destroyers are in the region, but I think that's more for long distance um, intercepts. Um, but we do know that the United States does have in both Iraq and Jordan uh, some air defense systems, and it appears that at least some of those air defense systems were boosted in advance of this uh, Iranian, Iraqi, Iranian retaliation. And so, therefore, one can assume that those um, uh, missile systems have been used now to bring some down at least some of these Iranian drones and missiles that have been headed towards Israel. And Louis, we know that the U.S. added additional um, assets into the region. Can you talk more about that? And are, are we talking about potentially, you know, like boots on the ground, not necessarily on the ground, but on, on battleships and whatnot throughout the region? Uh, that's right. We're not inside Israel proper. We are talking outside of Israel. That's where U.S. forces are located. We know uh, that there are 2,500 U.S. forces inside Iraq, that there's about 900 that are inside of Syria. But there is also a sizable component inside of Jordan. And so those locations do have air defense systems already. So it's very uh, likely that uh, these air defense systems were boosted in advance of this retaliatory strike. In fact, we were told that the U.S. was sending more uh, personnel to the ground there in the region, as well as air assets, so that means aviation aircraft, um, and also uh, naval. And that's those two destroyers that we're talking about that are located in the Eastern Med. Uh, Mediterranean, and what they do is they have the capability of shooting down both long-distance incoming missiles and shorter-range missiles. But I think as we're talking about U.S. forces shooting down these drones and missiles on their way to uh, Israel, I think one can assume it's those shorter uh, distance systems that the United States employs when it tries to shoot down anything that's incoming towards their bases. And Louis, can I pick up on something that, that Steve mentioned there? I know we got the confirmed that there were drones and missiles, um, but we were talking about the, the ballistic missile system that Iran has. Do we have any confirmation that they've launched any of those yet towards Israel? No confirmation yet from officials that I've been speaking to with, but again, uh, this is a developing situation. And one of the things that we've been told as as per Martha Raddatz's reporting, is that overall the U.S. is anticipating somewhere between four and 500 drones and missiles uh, being launched at uh, Israel. Uh, that means this is going to take some time. So potentially uh, some of those longer range, if faster moving ballistic missiles uh, could be used. But no, I don't have anything yet uh, from any officials I'm talking to right now. If anything, we're talking about the cruise missiles that have been launched. Um, and we should point out that even though it is a missile, cruise missiles do take some time to get to their targets as well. Um, they are not as fast moving as ballistic missiles, which take uh, a much faster, shorter time to get to a location because they go up higher in the air and then they strike at their targets. Yeah, Louis Martinez for us. Thank you so much. Uh, stand by. We'll come back to you if we get new information there. I do want to go back to Martha Raddatz, if we could. Because, Martha, as we're just watching all of this play out, all we can really do is go back through history and see sort of how um, the U.S. and Israel and Iran have responded to conflicts in the past. And we know that not long ago, a few years ago, it was the United States that took out a, a key Iranian commander, and that came with an Iranian response. How does that compare to what we're seeing now? It, it sure did prompt a response, with, and it prompted a response from Iran to go after U.S. troops in Iraq. Uh, 100, at least 100 were injured, injured with uh, traumatic brain injury, some of it very, very minor. Uh, but still, they launched missiles and rockets towards a U.S. base. This was after the drone strike on Qasem Soleimani in January of 2020. The uh, Iranian major general, uh, who was head of the Quds Force, a revered figure, 
in Iran. I was there just days after he was taken out by a U.S. drone in Iraq in a targeted drone strike on Soleimani. The U.S. said there an attack was imminent, something he was planning. It's never really been revealed exactly what he was planning, but some sort of attack, uh, according to U.S. officials who I have spoken to. Now, the response from Iran on that and that attack in uh, in Iraq, I think, was probably tamped down because in those days, and I happened to be there in Tehran when this happened, that... that the Iranians accidentally shot down a commercial airliner, if you if you remember, and it was shortly after uh, missiles were launched. But then they accidentally shot down that commercial aircraft, and I think they tamped down any further action after that. But they have issued fatwas against all of the people, including uh, General Mark Milley, uh, including Donald Trump. Anyone who was involved with that drone strike on Soleimani, they say they are after those people. So okay. that does remain. And that's the kind of response uh, that Iran will likely have if Israel, if, if Israel strikes back, which they will, uh, no matter what happens tonight, you will see a retaliation, according to the U.S. officials I have been talking to. You will absolutely see some sort of retaliation. But then what does Iran do? And you go back and forth and back and forth. And that's why this is so serious uh, tonight, what is happening, what the response will be, what the counter response will be. And again, just to remind our viewers who may just be turning in, Iran had been vowing uh, for days uh, to retaliate for Israel's deadly strike on the Iranian consulate in Syria. That was on April 1st, uh, 12 days ago. That killed 13 people, including several top Iranian military leaders. And, and Martha, if I could come back to you, because a lot of the intelligence, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the intelligence that we've been hearing from both Israeli and U.S. sources in recent weeks was that Iran didn't want a wider regional conflict and that Iran preferred to operate, you know, sort of standing behind their proxies in, 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 in Lebanon and in other places like Yemen. Um, so did something change tonight? Is this a signal that something's changed? I, you know, what? the answer to that is I think we don't know exactly, and we certainly didn't know it was going to be this big, particularly with the U.S. wanting them not to escalate. Please, please don't escalate. Uh, we understand there'll be some sort of response. Uh, surely they knew also that Israel would do everything possible to try to shoot down those drones and missiles. So they certainly knew that 500 missiles and drones weren't going to hit target. And according to the U.S. official I talked to, they are targeting military facilities. So maybe that's how they see this as not a huge escalation. But by any definition, this is an escalation. And you know what? I, I am thinking tonight there was how the people of Iran are feeling about this and about what is happening. After the death of Soleimani, I was in crowds of more than 100,000 people in the streets who were, it, it was death to America. It was death to Israel. You're going to hear a lot of that on the street soon, too. Yeah, and the people of Iran also know that Israel is likely to respond, too, and they will be bracing for that. Martha Raditz, thank you so much. Joining us now on the phone is Seema Shine, a former official at Israel's Ministry of Strategic Affairs. Seema, thank you so much for joining us right now. I, I wonder if you could give us any insight on what's happening. Uh, Forgive me, uh, we don't we don't have SEMA right now, but let's let's go back to Selena Wang at the White House, our senior White House correspondent. Um, Selena, just wondering what more you might be hearing from the administration. We know President Biden was in the Situation Room with his top national security advisors, and as the night has gone on, we've been hearing more and more about the U.S. intercepting and taking down some of these projectiles. Do you have any more information about what we're doing behind the scenes? Well, what I am, am learning that that meeting is wrapping up in the Situation Room. The president was there with his national security team for several hours. They're trying to assess this situation and calibrate the U.S. response. But really, the focus of the president here is deterrence and defense and protecting those U.S. forces in the region, already sending more military assets to the Middle East to try and protect them. As you say, the U.S. has already been trying to help Israel to intercept that barrage of missiles and drones coming through. The U.S. wants to intercept as much as they can. But really, for President Biden and what's putting this entire White House on edge with anxieties running so high is, as Martha 
Raddatz was saying is how Israel is going to respond. The president throughout this conflict since October 7, since the Middle East tensions have flared, he has been laser focused on keeping this conflict contained, trying to avoid that escalation. And now we're at a point that the president did not want to be in. He did not want Iran to respond and, of course, also frustrated that Israel did not give the U.S. a heads up about that Damascus strike in the first place. So very difficult situation for the president to be in and taking his eyes off the ball he had on earlier, which was to help negotiate that ceasefire between Hamas and Israel. Oh, Selena, forgive me. We're just, I was just getting some new information here uh, as we're following this. Just a reminder to our viewers of what you're seeing right now. This video, this is Iran launching an attack directly on Israel. Some of this video coming in of various projectiles. Some of them could be drones or missiles. We're told potentially by the hundreds fired from Iran directly into Israel. And the U.S. has played a role in taking down some of those projectiles. As of right now, we don't have any confirmation that any of those have landed within Israel caused any damage or casualties. We're still standing by for information on that. So, so far, the efforts to intercept have been successful. Again, President Biden today was brought back to the White House. He was supposed to spend the weekend in Delaware, but came back early so that he could meet with his national security team in the Situation Room. We saw some of those pictures from earlier today. We're going to stay on top of all of this. Our coverage continues on ABC News Live and ABCNews.com. We'll have a full wrap-up tomorrow on Good Morning America. I'm Whit Johnson in New York. Have a good night.